to most of us in democratic countries today, the idea of women not being able to vote is a pretty ridiculous one. Women's suffrage is simply the idea that women should be able to vote, something that we are doing a pretty good job of realising today. Women can vote in basically all democracies except for the Vatican if you even count what the Cardinals do as democracy. We see democracy as synonymous with everyone having equal say in the future decisions made by a country, even if that isn't exactly what's happening. The reality is that despite democracy really taking off as a system of government in Europe and the Americas in the late 19th century, there certainly wasn't a lot of equality. The United States Constitution didn't even initially specify who gets to vote, so naturally, white male property owners got to vote. Despite that being somewhere around 20% of the adult population. That sounds bad, but when the UK was first giving democracy a shot with their parliamentary system, only a few percent of the adult population could vote. They would gradually expand this over the years with various reforms. Though the story of democracy is a long one, with many countries emerging from tyranny, achieving democracy, then slipping back into authoritarian rule, this is a pretty common success story. Suffrage being a gradual and eventual success. Social progress tends to happen like that. Gradual progress egged on by previous gains. That's why New Zealanders are proud to be the first independent country in the world to grant women the vote. It was a long and hard fought battle, but today it is a distant memory, with women being well represented in parliament. The key player you have to remember is Kate Shepard. Fortunately, if you forget what she looks like, she has been immortalised on the $10 note. She is the person largely responsible for organising petitions to be sent to the government demanding the right to vote. Undeterred by her first two efforts passing through the democratically elected law house, but being defeated in the upper house, you know, the unelected one, she redoubled her efforts, sending a much larger petition which had over 30,000 signatures. A massive turnout considering the country's population was only around 600,000 at that point, and there was an enormous misogynistic culture seeking to oppress women. Even as an enormous petition arrived on his doorstep, Richard Seddon was actively campaigning the Legislative Council to block women's suffrage from becoming law, as he feared that women being able to vote would attempt prohibition like was happening in the United States. Finally, two councillors flipped on the, on the Prime Minister at the last minute, and Governor Glasgow signed it into law weeks later. To be clear, not all of the support for women wasn't earnest. Conservatives were motivated by predicting they would get the bulk of the new voters, rather than by morality, but that doesn't undermine what a huge deal it was. Emboldened by the movement's success, women's rights activists in the United Kingdom, United States and Australia renewed their efforts, following in New Zealand's footsteps just years later. Today, politics is a male-dominated field, but women are common participants, and female prime ministers are certainly not a rare thing.